Um, I did see a couple of questions in the chat box as well. Um, one of the questions was, uh, where does the North Central Regional Water Network get their grant fund or their funding? So um, would one of you guys want to take that on? Um, this is Christina. I did answer it a little little uh, ways down, but the North Central Region gets their money from the universities and the and uh, the directors of extension in the twelve states that it that it kind of encompasses. So the majority of the work will be in those twelve states, I, but I think a lot of what we're going to do is going to be applicable for states outside that region. Okay. Okay, so I have um, a, it's kind of a statement, but maybe somebody wants to elaborate more. It says, um, I'm not sure, but it sounds like the north central part of the U.S. is maybe behind the northeastern part of the U.S. in soil health. Uh, many farmers, producers are practicing soil health and, are, health and are seeing benefits of it and the use of manure. Uh, it would be re nice to see research on soil health, but farmers are seeing the benefits and cost returns from practicing these methods and standards. Would you agree with that, or would you like to elaborate on how that works? This is Christina again from Michigan, and what I see as I'm going around the region is every state's different. Um, I, in Michigan, the farms that I do uh, deal with, I deal with the farms in the north part of the state. Um, we view, view manure as a great resource. In fact, a lot of our farms are begging for it. We need man, more manure than what we can produce. So we already see the value. We know the value is there. Now we're just looking at the information that's out there and we're, we're giving it a place for all of that information to go. So farmers and consultants and other um, environmental people can go and grab that information and use it for their growers. And this is Rick. I would have to agree with some of the observations that uh, Christina shared uh, here in Nebraska. Uh, we have seen regions of the state where, the, as Christina shared, the, the manure is in greater demand than there is a supply. Now, that's not overall the state, but uh, there is that case, and we've got businesses that are starting up that are involved in the marketing of the manure. Now, to date, I think the conversation has been around manure as a replacement for the nutrient requirements of that crop and meeting that need. Uh, but I think there's a, a bigger story to tell, both in terms of the soil health issues and uh, benefits, and also in terms of just a, a, a yield boost that occurs that we see in many cases from manure. And, and I think that, in part, is tied to the, the soil health benefit. Uh, the other question that we had come in, um, and I know Christina answered this in the chat box, but go ahead and answer it live as well. Uh, with the roundtable discussions, have biosolids been discussed as being included, or have they been expressly excluded? Well, I, I know this is really looking at manure and, and its relationship to soil health. We haven't excluded anything at this point. If that's something that needs to be done, we'll do our best to, to address it. Um, but I, I don't see us going that route unless we get viewers who want us to do it. What do you think, Rick or Todd? Yeah, I think we're pretty open to ideas that might be shared that way. Um, we haven't had a lot of conversations about that, just like we've had some ask about the green manures, and that certainly could be a part of the discussion too, because anything that's helping the biologicals, and like Michael uh, Walker was bringing out, if there's some folks up in the northeast part of the U.S. that are have some information that could help us, I don't think any of us would be opposed to seeing if we can maybe bring some of that research in. Help us by sharing who some of those uh, research sources are and then maybe we can move them into some of the roundtable discussions, too. All right. Um, I have I get another statement from the audience. It says that he doesn't believe that many people in agriculture are, unaware, are aware of the benefits of manure application to crop growth. So um, because the concentration of the manure is stuck in one smaller geographic area and, and the economic feasibility of transporting it long distance has that is that something that you are you're looking at addressing as how to transport that manure 
But Bill, I think you raise a good question there, and there's a lot of variability from one location to another in that uh, I, I think we have a lot of crop farmers in Nebraska that are have not had used manure in many, many years, maybe a generation or more, and are not always aware of it. Uh, in our areas where we have larger feedlot concentration in Nebraska, we've got, I think, a greater awareness of that. So it is quite variable. Uh, but you're right. We do have to think in terms of how we can be creative in getting manure moved from the areas of concentration to areas of, of uh, where it has not had a history and uh, begin showing that value of manure in, in some of those newer places. I ran into a, 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 a crop farmer uh, just here this past week that was hauling manure 40 miles uh, from a, a, a poultry operation from broiler litter. It amazed me that uh, he was interested and willing to pay that cost. So it certainly varies from one location to another. Certainly. Uh, Carl has a question here. Any thoughts on human health aspects on using manure for sto soil restoration? Carol, I think that's a great roundtable discussion, and, and I hope that that's something that we will be looking at. Um, the microbiological side of, of manure and its re relationship to soil health is something that we need to look at, and there are experts out there that we need to get that information out to, to other states and other extension staff. All right. Not seeing. I want to say thank you to those of you that are putting ideas in the chat box for roundtables and blog posts and those kinds of things. Thank you very much for those. I'm sure the the rest of the group is excited to see those as well. So um, if there are any other questions, we'd be certainly welcome to answer them. Um, otherwise, uh, we're getting to where we're we're ready to wrap this up. Um, I know that the audience or the this group is more than welcome to. Uh, are more than willing to answer questions privately if there are if there are some of those